Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about a topic in data science that we honestly should have talked about a really long time ago on this channel. But the good news for us is that even though this topic, the confusion matrix, sounds confusing, it's actually pretty easy breezy in terms of the topics we're going to learn in data science, and so it shouldn't take long, just this one page for you today. So the fun little example is, let's say you've built a machine learning model that's going to take a picture of an article of clothing and tell you whether or not it's defective. So if it is defective, you can send it back, don't send it to the customer. If it's not defective, it's good to go, you can send that to the customer. So it's either not defective, defective equals zero, perfectly good article of clothing, or it is defective, like this shirt here, defective equals one. Now here's just a couple of examples coming out of your model. The first row here is whether or not that article of clothing is truly defective. So again, one means it is truly defective and zero means it is not defective. The second row here is whether or not your model thinks that article of clothing is or is not truly defective. And the ones and zeros mean the same thing. Now let's just go through an exercise of giving a name to each of these unique combinations of truly defective and predicted defective. If you think about it, there's two choices for each, and so there's only four possible total choices. And so we can just give a name to each of these. Let's look at this first one. For this first one, the product was truly defective, and our model, great job, did actually predict it as truly defective, and therefore we call this case a true positive. So we'd write that as TP. So let's dwell on that for just a second. That first letter, true, means that our model did a good job. It predicted this case correctly. And the second word positive tells us what our model predicted this case as. In this case, it was predicted in the positive class, which in the context of this problem means a defective product. Let's look at the second one. So this also our model predicted correctly. And so based on our logic of this true positive, this is also a true case. It's just the opposite in the case that it's a true negative. So the way to read this is basically, we truly predicted this case was negative, so in the zero class. Now we get to the more interesting cases where our model is making mistakes. And so because there's a mistake here, just the fact that the zero and one are not the same number, we already know the first letter for what this is called will have to be a false, an F, because we falsely identified this product. Now the second letter, using the same pattern we were talking about before, says that what we predicted this as, in this case we predicted this as a one, which is the positive class in this context, and therefore this is called a false positive. So you falsely predicted this case as positive, even though it was truly in the negative case. Now here's just the opposite case. Again, we know there's a mismatch here, so this has to be false, and this will be a false negative because we falsely predicted this item is not defective, in the negative class, even though it's actually in the positive class. And these other two we've already done, so we can just reference back to the ones we already know. So this zero, zero, true, because we got it right. And what did we predict it as? We predicted it as a zero, which is the negative class, true negative. And this we also know the one zero, that's a false negative. So now we got this nice enumeration of what each of our examples falls into. Now we build up the confusion matrix itself, and the confusion matrix is basically just this two by two matrix with these four cells. And inside each cell, we just put the count of the number of each case. So let's break down these cells one by one. What is this top left cell telling us? Well, this top left cell says that the predicted class was defective, and the actual class was defective, which we know already are called true positives. So we can say these are counting up all the true positives that are in our data set. And if we look in these six examples, there's just one such example. So this is equal to one. Now let's look at the second box here. This is where things get a little bit interesting. In here, we're saying the predicted class is zero. So these are predicted. Our model said this is not defective, but the actual class is one. It is defective. And so we falsely put these in the negative class, AKA false negatives, and we see there's two such ones here, this one and this one. Therefore, these false negatives, we put two of them here. And now we're starting to get the hang of things. So what's this bottom left box here? Here we're predicting things to be defective. So it's going to the second letter needs to be positive because we're predicting them in the positive class, but we're wrong about it because they're actually not defective. So these are false positives. And how many of those do we see? Well, we just see one of those. So there's one of them here. And this last class, the last thing left is the true negatives. 
practice for completeness. We are truly predicting this in the negative class, and hey, it actually is in the negative class. How many true negatives do we have in the data set? We have this one, and we have this one, we have two. So sanity check, these numbers, one plus two plus one plus two adds up to six. There's six examples here, everything's good to go. And that's it, folks. That's all the confusion matrix is. We typically use it in binary classification problems, but I will say that you can use it in multi-class classification problems too. For example, if you're predicting which major in college that a high school student will go into, well, there's not just two majors, maybe there's like 10 different majors. So all that changes now, it's just a 10 by 10 matrix. For example, you count the number of times that you predicted someone will go into math major, but they actually go into an English major and so on and so on. But one thing that's always true with these uh, confusion matrices is that the diagonal, so if you go from the top left to the bottom right box, these are counting up all the times that your model was exactly correct. So we see in this case, this is where we were exactly correct for the positive classes, and this is where we were exactly correct for the negative classes. And everything off the diagonal of the confusion matrix is cases where we're wrong in some way. In the binary case, there's only two ways to be wrong. But in general, in the multi-class case, there's many more combinations of ways to be wrong. But all this is is just counting up how many times you were right and wrong and in which ways you were right and wrong. Now, the more interesting part with the confusion matrix really comes with calculating metrics in data science that we care about. So we've heard about metrics like accuracy and precision and recall. And looking at a confusion matrix is a really easy way to calculate these metrics because all the numbers we need are in one or more of these cells inside the confusion matrix. For example, what's accuracy? Maybe the first metric we learn about in data science. Well, accuracy is just the number of times we got things right divided by the total number of things there are. And so the number of things we got right are just the true positives plus the true negatives. So true positives plus the true negative divided by the total number of things there are. Well, in that case, that's just adding up all the numbers in this matrix. So that would be adding up the true positives plus the false negatives plus the false positives plus the true negatives. So just curious, what is the accuracy in this problem? One plus two gives you three. Three divided by six is 50%, and so the accuracy in this problem would be 50%. Now we also learned that there's other interesting metrics in data science that are more helpful in certain situations, like precision and recall. What is precision? If we think back, precision is saying out of all of the times you predicted something to be in the positive class, how many times were you correct about it? So in other words, how precise are you when you predict something to be in the positive class? Well, the denominator is gonna be all the times we predict something to be in the positive class, which you can just read off as the first column of this table. The true positives plus the false positives. So that will be the denominator. And the numerator is how many of those were we correct about? Well, we were only correct about the true positives by definition. And so this is gonna be one divided by one plus one, which is also 50%. So this is 50% as well. And recall is saying out of all the truly positive cases in your data, so in this case, out of all the truly defective products, how many of those were you right about? And so if we look at that, that's just looking at the first row of the confusion matrix because that's saying these are all the truly defective products. And so we see that's gonna be the true positives plus the false negatives in the denominator. And which of those were we correct about? We were correct about the true positives. And so this, is that gonna be 50% too? No, it's not. It's going to be one divided by three or 33%. And so there's many other metrics too that are variations of accuracy and precision and recall, or for example, if you wanna combine precision and recall into F1 score, we can get fancier and fancier here. But the point that I wanted to get across is that the confusion matrix is not really confusing. In fact, it's just called the confusion matrix because looking at this matrix tells you how often your model is confusing one class with another class. So in this case, there's three cases where we're confusing one class with another. And there's also three cases where we're not confusing one class with another class. It's just a way for you to keep track. It's kind of like a record keeping tool of how well is my model doing and how can I see that by just glancing at a quick two by two summary here. So that's all I really have to say about the confusion matrix. You'll see it come up a bunch, especially in binary and multi-class classification problems. If you have any questions or comments at all, please leave them in the comments section below. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe for more videos just like this and I'll see you next time.